And as the next thing, we're gonna talk a little bit about the photoresist, which plays much more of an important role that I'm able to cover here. I'm not a chemist, I always embarrass myself when I talk about these things. Uh, and I won't say much. Basically, you see here the process again, which we've already seen in the movie. Today, the working horse of photoresists are the cars, chemically amplified resists. And uh, if you like, you can spend some time trying to decipher those uh, chemi chemical equations here. Uh, in a nutshell for me, what I think is sufficient to know as a lithographer or a physicist, um, photoresist is a polymer that is mixed with several compounds. The most important one is the so-called photoacid generator, uh, generator. That molecule, that's what you see here. When a photon hits, it breaks the molecule apart. And there's a couple pieces, and one of them is an acid, a photoacid. And that photoacid now reacts with the polymer and breaks, breaks, breaks pieces off and now the, the polymer becomes soluble by the developer. And the fun thing here is that acid is not gonna be consumed by this reaction, it comes out, so it's like a catalyzer, and it, it basically amplifies what happened in the exposure. Now, there's another thing that I didn't mention here. Uh, if, if the catalyzer is going too wild, you can put something in called quencher, that makes sure that the cat catalyzer at some point also finds its reaction partner. That's in 248 and 193 nanometer lithography. EUV, the idea is the same. You also have chemically amplified resists. You also have different types of resists. The only difference is the EUV photon has such a high energy that all it does, it releases an electron, and that electron still has a very high energy. It doesn't do reactions, but it releases secondary electrons while bouncing around in the material, and those second, secondary electrons now are able to do the chemistry. So that's all the chemistry that I understand about this. Uh, one thing that, is, to my understanding, is much more important to understand uh, why the resist is so important. When you have an image of an object, so what you see here is through focus, the intensity distribution, and you can see, of course, you're coming from out of focus, the image is not sharp, and then eventually somewhere you have a sharp image, but that image is not really sharp. It's kind of like a sine wave. And once you're exposed it, the photoresist looks nice, crisp, and sharp. So how, how, how can that happen? How does this turn into something like this? So we need to understand what happens when the resist is being exposed by different amounts of lights. And so when you take a photoresist, it has a certain thickness. So in a film, for instance, that thickness determines the the transparency of that film. If you have no light, it remains after development. If you have some light, a little bit of the thickness is chewed away by the development process. More light, even more gets chewed away and so on. So if you now plot the thickness of this remaining photoresist as a function of dose, you get what uh, resist people call a contrast curve. And in the days when our camera lenses still had films, that's what films would do. That would be a photographic film. In lithography, you don't necessarily want this kind of contrast. What you do in, in lithography, they have not this linear contrast curve. They, for quite some time, know nothing. So this, again, is increasing exposure dose. They don't do anything. And then all of a sudden, it starts feeling reacted. It starts reacting to the light. The thickness gets very quickly, very thin. And then, so you have only a small range of dose 
where the thickness of the resist changes before it's fully there and after that it's fully gone. So, and this is the key how these resist profiles get sharp. So you can show it here. This is the aerial image intensity. I flipped it 90 degrees. That's how my aerial image looks like. That's my resist contrast curve. And now for each intensity here, same axis, I go up, look at what's the resist thickness. And if I do this for different dose values, you can see how this contrast curve makes this soft aerial image into a sharp resist profile. So this is a key element in uh, making these devices work, not only optics, also the chemistry. So the chemistry actually deserves much more credit than I'm able to give it as a physicist. Uh, these guys are definitely enablers as well in making lithography happen. One thing to keep in mind, sometimes people get confused because contrast is used uh, for two different things. So in optics, we use contrast as the ratio of the minimum and uh, maximum intensity in an aerial image. So it's the contrast is the delta between those divided by the sum, while the resist contrast is the slope of this curve. So it's not the same thing, even though it has the same name. So in summary, Moore's law, despite sometimes being declared dead, it will continue, it's healthy and alive, it will continue for many years to come to make uh, better devices, more memory and uh, faster chips and more transistors per area. Lithography is no longer the only way to shrink, but it's still one way to shrink and uh, it will continue to play a role in particular EUV for the years to come. And in the last and the third section, I pointed out that the photoresist is an essential part in bringing the image down to the wafer. And uh, there's still, as we speak, also a lot of work being done to improve on this side.